Hey everybody, Brian from Mile Split here with Leon Elwi uh, from Louisiana Warren Easton High School. Uh, just put down a really, really impressive performance this past weekend, winning the Mobile Challenge of Champions Invitational 1051 uh, in the finals. That's currently one of the top times in the nation. Uh, US number three, wind legal, uh, 1.5. Leon, thank you so much for joining me and uh, you know, kind of chatting about your race. Yeah, uh, it was kind of, I was kind of nervous because my first time out of Louisiana, but once I got to the line, the nerves calmed down. It was like, just win. What was it like kind of, you know, taking that jump and getting out of state? And then, you know, did you know in the competition around you? Because Jacobin Retta, he's a pretty big name, obviously. Uh, you know, one of the top guys this year in the 60 um, from Alabama did really well at Adidas and North Nationals. Did you know you were racing against him? No, I didn't really I didn't know. I just saw the lanes I was in. And like I was like, if I'm in lane two and they have the better lane, then the time must be real, real good. Because the best time I ran this year was a 10-4-4. And I was like, if I have lane two, they must be running 10 threes, uh, 10 flats. So I just went out there to compete. Awesome. What was it like, you know, getting to see some guys? I think there was some guys from Mississippi. There was obviously some guys from uh, Louisiana. There were some guys from Alabama. What was it like getting to see um, that kind of competition outside of the state? It was a it was a test for me to see if like if I was just if I was fast enough to compete with other people outside of the state. Um, you know, obviously you raced the hundred and you also raced the 200 and finished fourth there, 22, 13. Talk to me a little bit about the 200 race and, you know, what, what kind of event do you like more? Do you like, do you more the, the pure speed guy in the hundred or do you like the 200 as well with the curve? I like the hundred more, but I've been running the 200 since freshman. Year, so I could do both. Saturday was really like, it was more of a mind game for me because I don't, it's like, Lane, lane one is a mind game, and I basically failed the mind game. So talk to me about that time for you. Obviously, you know, uh, close to your PR in the 200, or, you know, at least a wind legal, you know, really good time. Uh, PR in the 100, 1051. You know, what was it like to get the PRs of that meet, and what are you kind of doing in each practice to, to continue to improve? What are some things you really focus on? It's more of my teammates. They don't let me slack. You know, when we have practice, they don't let me slack. They, they running with me, making sure I'm pushing to get them better and to get me better. Um, what's it like to have that kind of team camaraderie? Because a lot of guys that run that kind of time don't have a team around them that can push them that faster to be able to get them to those times. It's like a it's a family beat. Like basically, it's a family. We all we all know what we gotta do, so we all practice together to to make each other better. Um, you know, let's go back now a little bit and talk about indoor. You raced one indoor meet at the LS, LSU High School Qualifier. You ran 686. I think it was like number 22 at the end of the year in the 60. Uh, you know, pretty pretty solid performance there. Uh, what kept you out of the state meet? Is it just like your school didn't compete in the state uh, state meet or? Things had, I, uh, I don't really remember why I didn't move, but I was supposed to pee that in that meet. Gotcha. Um, looking at overall, though, obviously, you know, in 2020, you were second at state in the 60 in the in the indoor season. Um, but your progression has just gotten faster and faster and faster. Um, other than having those guys around you to push you, is there any things you guys focus on in training? Like, does your coach work really work your block starts? Like, different phases of your race, your form? Like, what really is kind of something that you think is? Our practices, they're, they're broken up. They're brewing up like Monday and Tuesday. It'd be more of, of a core D, and two, Wednesday, Thursday is more of a block work D, speed work, getting your legs stronger. And like, and it's it depends on like what days the meet is. But our our practice is broke up into different phases of your race. Awesome, and obviously that that sounds like it probably is pretty beneficial to be able to focus in on each each aspect. Correct. Um, okay, so obviously, you know, also you play football, you're a wide receiver. And, you know, we always love talking with track athletes. We're also football guys. 
because obviously there's got to be huge benefits and crossover there. How does, you know, working uh, during the, the off season for football help get you ready for that football season? Because I watched some of your highlights there. You got some speed. I mean, you catch the ball and you, you just take off. It's, um, it's like, it's the conditioning, the conditioning part and keeping your legs moving during the off season rather than just sitting down. And then it's, it's the weight, it's the weight lifting too. The weight lifting it help you and then like track, you were running a lot already. So when you get the football season, you're already in shape. And you don't really have to work on changing gears into this book because both have to do deal with running. Now, is it is the football coach uh, also a track coach, or do you, does he at least like push you guys towards running running track? And what's that like to have a, a coach who's kind of involved in all aspects of everything? Um, he is is good because you you with him all year round. So it's like if you're in, you're winning with the same coach, which build chemistry with the team. Awesome. Um, and then obviously you know just on your Twitter feed that you got some you know offers to to play at different colleges for um, football. Is there are you looking at possibly running track also, or would you kind of drop track and focus mostly on football, or is it kind of like one kind of helps you build for the other? Right now I'm sitting at zero offers for both sports, but I'm looking to do both in college. It don't matter which scholarship I get, I'm looking to do both. What would that mean to you? I feel like most colleges, uh, you know, do allow you to run both uh, or, or compete in both. Um, but do you think, I mean, what added value does track athletes bring to the football field? I feel like a lot of guys like, you know, kind of gloss over it, but I think it, it does build a lot. And you see a lot of those guys, you know, especially at the NFL or like Anthony Schwartz in college, he was a huge runner, you know, one of the top guys and went to Auburn now going to the draft. You know, what's it like to see a guy like that who could have excelled in, in either or is excelling in both? Uh, I look at, it, I, I know I can maybe get out of either one of these sports, but I know my stronger suit is track. So I focus on track and football, trying to progress in both each year. Awesome. What are uh, some of your big goals for this track season? What are you hoping to achieve by the end of it? Is there any times that you have kind of written down or, or on goal list or um, any big performances, you know, say the state meet or any out of state meets that you want to really excel at? My teammates at practice, they, they keep me up with 100 times. And they yeah, joke with me about when I'm going to get to the 10-3. So I was like, I'm like, this year, before this end of the track season, I want to have the fastest time in Indonesia at 100. Um, what would that mean to you to be able to run that kind of time? And, and what do you think it's going to take to get there? It's going to show the hard work that I put, that we put, that the team put in during the training season. And that's just going to be a, a accomplishment to go, well, it's a challenge. I mean, I, I face the challenge to, to my teammates. How, um, you know, obviously you're talking a lot about your team, and I think team is a huge aspect. How do you, you, I'm sure probably one of the leaders on the team, or, you know, if you're, if you're not one of the fastest guys on the team, how do you kind of feed off their energy, but also how do you kind of keep them in check and tell them, hey, like, you know, hey, no slacking off this rep, you got to keep working hard. Like, is there any of that? And how does that really help you to, yeah, subscribe, subscribe? We all can tell when each other's down. So, like, if we see one one player down, the whole team will come from And, like, on the race, if we see you and do your best, we'll talk to you about it. And at practice, we'll just try to fix what you went wrong in. Awesome, man. Uh, a couple of fun questions. What's something that kind of gets you pumped up before a big race? Do you listen to music? Do you have like a motivational speech that you listen to? Is it your teammates? Like what, what gets you pumped up to, to race? So for every race, we'll be on a, our team. The team will be on the field together, or some of us will be on the field together. I have someone on the team who rolls me, and I have a couple of friends on the field that's talk to me and yeah, listen to music that oh yeah I'll just get hyped for our race. What do they tell you? What what's kind of their go to to thing for you? Is it like hey be calm or hey like let's go? Like they get you hyped up. Is there like a, a balance? 
you got a freshman on the team, Frederick Robinson, and he ran out to me. So his his intention is to beat me. So he'll be like, I'm off on the 10 2 today and beat you. So it's like a competition between me and him. So there's a little bit of a fun rivalry. That's that's fun. Awesome. Is do you have any like pre race rituals? Is there anything that like before your race I, I you know, I have to eat a banana an hour before, or have a cracker, <laughs> peanut butter, whatever it is, socks. I mean, I just well, we could call this a pre uh, a pre race ritual. I take off I keep my pants on. They have my um spikes on with the pants and I just unzip them before the race and take them off. Just making sure you're staying warm by, by keeping the pants on right until the last second, huh? Kind of thing. Um, any kind of post-race ritual? Is there anything that you do after the race? Like, you know, hey, like after the race, I go you know, have a cheeseburger or, you know, get a milkshake. You know, a lot of athletes, like when they run well, they'll, they'll kind of reward themselves. Is there anything that you do after a race that, you know, if you ran well? After the race, uh, no. Cause I'm already just like uh, back to back, so. I already right, have a, a ritual. Gotcha. Awesome, man. Um, is there anything else that you think I'm forgetting to ask you that you'd like to add about your, your season so far, about some of your goals, about football or track that we that we maybe didn't talk about? Uh, you said earlier, like the PR for me, the 10 to 5, I went 10 for for this season. And I feel good about the 10 for for because I kind of doubted myself, but at the same time, I didn't. And and of 200, I went 21.6, like two weeks ago. And that was a compliment to me because it was a compliment to me and the team because, like, I was stuck at 22 for the longest. And I knew I was pushing to get at 21. What was it like to, to break that, you know, 22-second barrier? And do you think, you know, with a, a 22 – or yeah, sorry. Do you, do you think like what what's kind of like those barriers like that break that where you really start to feel accomplished at? Like what what's kind of the next goal for that two hundred? Let's go for the two hundred. I gotta get it down to at least a twenty one three before the season over. Awesome. At least a twenty one three. Awesome, man. Um, cool. Yeah, really good talk. If there's like I said, anything else that you, you want to talk about, uh, feel free. But if not, uh, thank you so much for talking with me and. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure. Hey, pleasure talking to you too. Cool.